Okay, so I want to welcome everyone to the August team call. So a couple of quick announcements before we kick off with our guest speaker, which I will, who I will introduce. Um, so um, first of all, I don't know if anyone else noticed, I literally logged into the coach office today and it was like, you're getting a $10 coupon. And I was like, okay, cool. So um, I totally missed the announcement on that. Um, so there's a coupon that should have ended up in your email today for, yeah, I know Smith. I was like, what's going on? Um, for $10 off, I believe it's any challenge pack. Although I did have a question about that and maybe someone can answer it. It said fitness, nutrition, and supplements. Does it include a three-day refresh pack? Yeah, it's every challenge pack. It is every challenge pack. Okay, because I got confused by the fitness piece because I was like, three-day refresh doesn't have fitness. So they go answer your question. Every single challenge pack, um, an extra $10 off coupon. It's good from now until the end of the month. So every active coach account has one. So if you have a spouse account, you will get two, um, one for each account. And you don't have to use them for that account, right? So like if someone is not going to use theirs, you can snag it and use it with one of your customers. If there's someone that's still hanging out as a discount coach and hasn't moved over to a preferred customer yet. The second announcement is Whitney and I did a what is coaching um, last night as an event. Um, so not in a group as an event. Um, and she posted that in the team page. We can repost that again, but it's totally cool to go in and add tag message people. So you can invite them to the event. You can tag them. There's five five, six posts, six posts. So there's a welcome post for like body posts, which talk about kind of what we do, how we make money, all the more nitty gritty stuff. So Whitney did a welcome with her story. And then I did a closing, which was actually really spastic. Um, I was kind of all over the place in my closing and then told people how to sign up. So feel free to continue to use that event. Um, I did a stories about it yesterday and had someone be like, oh, I can't make it live, but love to attend. I'm like, perfect. So just feel free to add tag message them in that group. Um, and then I was brainstorming. I need to talk to Whitney about this. We always do like a launch um, group for new programs as they come out. And I'm wondering if in September, because we don't have a new program because we're launching body and the mix bike, if we do a body and mix bike, what is group? Um, but Whitney and I can talk about that. But that was something I thought about doing in September because usually we have, last year we had 30 day breakaway. The year before it was, nope, it was Molly's other program. Work. Yeah. Work, thank you. And before that we had shift shop. So usually it's smaller, more niche programs that launch in the fall. They're not usually like, like really widely used programs are a little bit smaller. Um, but we're thinking about doing something for body and the mix bikes. I think that'd be really cool. So without further ado, I'm going to stop um, blabbing, I'll say. Um, so I'm just going to grab Samantha's really impressive statistics. So I don't want to screw this up. So she's going to be talking to us about building a long-term income, which is um, something that's, I guess, near and dear to my heart and something that I've really strived to build in this business and not just build for recognition. She started coaching in 2013 um, and started earning six figures after two years of coaching, which is really impressive and super amazing. Two time premier, one time premier, two time elite. Same as me, Samantha. That's fun. Um, lifetime seven star. And um, she mentored two new diamonds and six of her current diamonds became star diamonds. So she's really building leaders in her business and helping them build leaders. She's hit success club for 87 months in a row. Um, and she has a four month old named Griffin, but I think this was back in February we talked. So how old is he now? Yeah, that he's makes, 10 months now. That's that makes like nine months. <laughs> um, and she's an Enneagram nine. So, um, Samantha, I'm going to let you take it away and go on you. Um, so I am a squirrel if I don't have a presentation. So I made a, um, a little document for you guys. Can you, uh, allow me to share my screen, Jillian? <clears throat> okay. Let's, can you guys see this? Yeah, okay. 
Let me make it a little bigger. <clears throat> or can I present? Oh, there we go. Okay. So yeah, as Jillian just said, we're going to talk about billing for income and longevity. Um, just, I guess, before I get started in my journey, I love this topic because I am a coach that signed up. One of the many reasons was for income. And I don't hear that very much. And I almost feel like some coaches feel like it's taboo to talk about income or at least signing up to make money because the majority of people I hear at least sign up to help people, which of course we get to help people, but it's so cool that we make money by helping people, right? And so income was something that I really wanted to push for. And so that was what really drove my whole business was a vision linked to that. And long, I truly believe that success comes from longevity. You guys know this is not an overnight success. So we'll tap into that as well. So where I started all the way back in 2013, it's funny, this picture that you see was actually taken on like a digital camera because I didn't have an iPhone at the time, or I didn't have like a phone that you could take a picture with and then upload it anywhere at the time. Um, and I, before having the iPhone as a coach, I had an iPod mini. Did you guys ever have that? Do you know what that even is? <laughs> anyway, it, it's like an iPhone but it only works on Wi-Fi and it was severely limited and all of the things. That's when I started my business on because I still had a flip phone. Um, I signed up to coach for the income, as I just said, but also I was really scared to lose my progress. I started back in the DVD era and I did Turbo Fire as my first program. Loved it, saw amazing results, loved the energy from the trainer. Um, and I prior to turbo fire was going to the gym, running as long as I could doing all the, as much as I could to try and burn as many calories, but then I would binge and restrict when, when it came to my food. And I just felt so good after turbo fire that I was truly scared to lose my progress. And I thought coaching would hold me accountable to staying consistent on this journey. That makes me feel so good. As you can probably assume by my iPod mini story, I was inactive on social media. Um, I was also one that was really scared to talk to my warm market. And I'm curious if you guys want to type in the chat, which one you are, because I feel like people are either scared to talk to their warm market and want to directly go to the strangers, or you're scared to death to talk to strangers, but you're cool with talking to your warm market. I'm curious what you guys are. I was scared to talk to my warm market, meaning family, friends, et cetera. Jillian said scared for warm for me. Yeah, I was just really nervous about what they would think, what they would say, what I would say, you know, like how do I explain all this to them? So I created a brand new Instagram account, a brand new Facebook I guess it was a page that was linked to my account. I tried to like start really fresh with everything. Carrie said she was warm as well. We're all so similar. Um, and I remember talking to my sister who it took her two years to sign up as a coach, you guys. But in the beginning, I was telling her all about it. And she was like, what do you even have to do? And I said, well, my coach said I need to help three people a month. <laughs> and I think I can do that in my first month, maybe next month. And after that, I really don't know. <laughs> um, but I was up for the challenge. I told myself that I would sign up on November 1st because I was working full time and actually traveling in Asia for the two weeks prior. But I got so excited that I was like, what the hell? I'm going to do it anyways. And I signed up before leaving and I was up at like it was midnight their time, which was noon here. And I was like trying to message all of the strangers, um, but it was really exciting for me to get started. So what changed though, from that version of me of like scared, timid, kind of sort of in see what happens. First and foremost, I view, viewed it like a business. If your goal is to earn an income, you've got to show up like this is a business. You can't just dabble in it. And I get the question or not question, but the assumption a lot of all in, meaning it takes all your time. And that is not the case going all in and treating it like a business within the time that you have. So again, I was working full time when I first started and I, I had hobbies, I was playing soccer, I did a lot of things. And so I worked my business truly for like an hour and a half each day. I would get up at like 5 a.m., do my workout, plan my day. I would go on Facebook and do some stuff at lunchtime and then like 30 minutes at night. So 
I built my business up to that um, six figure point within two years in that amount of time. I was just laser focused and treated this like a business. I talked to all of the people. I will say, despite creating that separate Facebook page, first, I did have the balls to actually invite you can invite friends, like Facebook friends, to like a page. I invited all those people while expanding my network. And to my surprise, a lot of people liked what I was not, I shouldn't even say a lot, five people, 10 people were liking what I was posting. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are people that like, I went to high school with that I haven't talked to in forever or college with. And so seeing that they were liking those posts gave me confidence to then start posting on my personal page. And that definitely opened up a whole can of worms for me. So I'm not sure where you guys are at, or if you have teams where they are at, but posting on my personal Facebook page really open the door because more people see it right versus versus a Facebook page. And so my goal was just to talk to all of the people. And if they said yes, my mindset was great. I'll send them more information. If they said no, my mindset was great. I have so many more people to talk to that. I just didn't, since the goal was to talk to as many people as possible, no's didn't scare me. They were just like, okay, on to the next. Um, I knew that rejection was normal. And that's something that I try to a, remember, because it still stings, <laughs> even eight years in almost, um, but also for our downline coaches, I like to set the expectation that people will say no. They'll join you eventually, but they will say no up front because they don't trust you enough or they don't know enough. I also got creative, and we'll talk more about that on later slides, and we'll talk about this too, but I wanted to point it out here. I invited to the coaching opportunity right away. I think I was so excited to do that part of it because income was a goal, but also I have always really enjoyed leadership roles, whether it be on the soccer field, or I did competitive cheerleading in college, or um, even at work, like I would always, I would have like want to pee my pants, but love when somebody asked me to speak or right or to present on something. So the coaching opportunity and building my own team was exciting. I was nervous, but I wanted to do it. So I invited to that. So I'm not sure if this makes sense, but I love to say it because there is a personal development book. It's erasing my mind right now. Oh, it's, um, I think, I think it's 12 week year. Have you guys read that? It's awesome. Um, and there's a workbook that goes with it. And that workbook says you should interview someone that's successful. And one of the questions, so one of my downline coaches interviewed me and one of the questions she asked me was, um, like, why do you feel like you are where you are? And the only answer I could really think of was the quote you see here. While coaching was never my plan A, right? Like I had that corporate job. I enjoyed it. My job was, or my goal was never to leave that job. So while coaching was never my plan A, it was also never my plan B. It was never like, mm, we'll see, you know, when I first signed up, I did in the back of my mind say, I'm going to give myself six months to see if I have fun with it and if I earn my money back. But after that, I'll either quit and it is what it is, or I'm going to keep growing. So after that point, that six months, and I was in, it, it wasn't even an option to not coach. And that doesn't mean that I was giving 110% every time. I just heard a training recently that said, you know, you go through so many seasons of life great seasons where you're happy and in alignment and all the things are happening, really sucky seasons. And then just kind of like stagnant seasons. And you don't have to push 110% all of the time, but if you want that goal at the end, whatever that vision is for you, you've got to at least push. And so that was my mindset was I have to do at least a little bit. So we're going to grow or go into how I grew specifically my income, how I attracted those working coaches, training those coaches, and then kind of what it looks like after all of that. So how I matched my full-time income in two years. There's kind of a lot on this slide, but first and foremost, it comes down to you. So I signed up in October of 2013. In December, we got an email from corporate saying if we hit Success Club 5 every month in 2014, we would get an extra $500 towards the uh, Success Club trip. If we hit Success Club 10, we would get an extra $750 towards the Success Club trip. 
And I should say, <laughs> I am so motivated by income because I didn't have it, right? Like, so the fact that we could get free money from Beachbody, I was like, I'm going all in. I want that $750, not the 500. I want the 750. So that's when I set the goal of Success Club 10 every single month. And that really did stem from, I didn't have it. Like the paying a hundred dollars a month for Shakeology was like, no, like people do that. I actually didn't hit Success Club my first month because I didn't know that that was a requirement. I, st I signed up three people, but I didn't know that was a requirement. And I was like, I'm not going to keep paying for that. And so I was one of those annoying people that that happened to. Um, but I set that goal of success club 10, seeing the financial benefit from that. And I have hit success club 10 every single month since January of 2014, except one month, two summers ago. Now my Instagram actually got hacked and, um, I hit success club six that month, but every other month was success club 10. I am really good at tracking and it's changed over the years. Right now, I don't track the people that I am really connecting with. I used to track everyone, the names of people I expanded, the names of when I connected with them, when I invited them, when I followed up. Now I'm just so... Um, I, I do a lot of connecting, which for me is just going on Instagram and Facebook interacting with people who like my stuff, who are watching my stories, but also who's just in my feed. And I'm so intentional with connecting that I don't track those people because I'm, I feel like I'm doing it all day, every day, but I start tracking after I send the invite and they say, yes, as you heard, I have a 10 month old baby. And so I used to be very organized with like a computer system. I used Excel and then streak and Asana, but what I'm doing this month is in my notes, I have what I called August 2021 hot list. So literally when someone responds to my invite saying, sure, tell me more, I just add them to my phone. And so that is how I follow up with them. Um, and a lot of personal messages. I know some coaches, they don't have to send as many personal messages or people come to them. And that has never been my thing. I grew my business by reaching out to other people. Um, so that was important for my growth. And then once we take care of all of our ducks, then you can focus on your team. And that's where I was hosting sneak peeks. And when it first started, we didn't even have presentations. It was a hotline that you would call into. And so I, my coach hosted one and I asked her if I could be on that call. And I was scared to death, but all my, my only job was to share my story. And I was like, I don't really have a story. Like I'm just the same as everyone, but I did it anyways. And after that sneak peek, I started doing my own with calling into that hotline. And then it looked like Facebook groups. Now you guys have your own sneak peeks. Mine are pretty similar. Um, but I invited to that and I not only invited, I started hosting them right away. And I feel like that is a big difference because when you host it, you are way more committed to getting people to show up than if you just invite to it. So I would challenge you guys, if you're not yet to actually host one of your own, or at least pretend like you're hosting it, right? Jump on in with Jillian and Whitney's, but treat it like you need to bring in five people that want to watch that video or whatever it is. Um, next is when I first signed up also, there was discount coaching wasn't really a word. So if I had to grow a team, I had to invite to the coaching opportunity or I was inviting to become a customer. So when I was an Emerald, just two people on each side, I was earning approximately 250 a week because I was signing up coach or sorry, yeah, coaches, but also customers that would be renewing, which I do think is a short-term benefit. Building a team is definitely that long-term sustainable income. But I always like to point out that so many coaches think they have to get to diamond in order to start earning a lot of income, like a thousand dollars a month or more. And you can actually do that as an emerald. You just have to put ownership on yourself and be signing up those people. Um, lastly, for team growth, I 
was a diamond with working coaches. Like I said, cause discount wasn't really a thing. And I should point out all these people said they wanted to work the business, right? Did they all No. So keep that in mind for your teams. Like people will say that they want to work the business and say they have these grand plans and schemes and they won't all, but they told me that they would. I became one star at the end of my first year and three star by the end of my second year. So I don't think I didn't, I'm not one of those coaches that went from like my upline went from two star to 12 star in one year. I'm not like that, but I've been consistent. And I did have a lot of coaches doing a little, you know, like hitting success club two, four, six, um, and then teaching them to do the same thing. Like they had some downline girls doing some work. So all of that contributed, contributed to the income. And last but not least, duplication, right? So now we, we checked off our goals. We're growing our team. But then it's time to help our team grow their teams. So with those sneak peeks that I mentioned, I had my coaches on those sneak peeks. Once they got familiar with it, I had them do their own sneak peeks. And I had them invite their downline coaches to be on their sneak peeks. If they weren't comfortable yet, I would just go down the line and invite their coaches to be on my sneak peek just to give them that opportunity. I'm definitely a coach that built, tries at least to build deep. And I try and work with anyone who's showing up, not just my personally sponsored coaches. Um, I taught them to recruit and to post about the coaching opportunity right away. And I do mention diamond. I know I mentioned earlier, you can earn, you know, a decent amount as an emerald, but I do stress diamond because you earn more per team cycle. And then it gets excited. I feel like everything opens up at diamond so much more becomes available to you. You have so much more confidence in you as a leader in your business and diamond, I think is where the fun really starts. And then you get to go up to star diamond for the bonuses, which income is exciting for me. So that's, that's really what I pushed. Okay. So now that you have um, your game plan. It, how do we attract those working coaches? Number one, post about the coaching opportunity. A lot of my girls don't know how to do this. And so I tell them to just jot down everything that they love about coaching from the tiniest of things, right? So if you're brand new, it could be like, you just love the community. You love, you know, these Wednesday night team calls, you love, the virtual summit or that you're going to summit next year. Um, you love that you are feeling better. Once you get more into it, maybe you love that your paycheck filled your gas tank. Uh, one thing for me is that I used to be so cheap and I would get the I think it's like a dollar 99 toilet paper, which is the worst kind. If you've ever had to get that, like I never would recommend it, but that's how frugal I was. I was like, if I'm going to spend my money on something, it's not going to be on toilet paper. And anyways, I eventually upgrade. I was like, you know what? I can afford cotton now, which is like super luxurious. I feel like. And so I did a post once about my toilet paper upgrade and it was silly, but like so many people could resonate with that. I actually heard in a different training that you should never post about an income greater than $150 because people think it's unachievable. They're like, cool, good for her, but I can't do that. So ever since I heard that, even though my income is amazing and hopefully you guys are inspired by it, the rest of the world is not. So I don't ever mention it. Again, coaches, I feel like think, oh, well, I'm not successful. I haven't earned X amount of dollars yet. But as long as you've earned anything, that success, right? And that is more than what that follower is earning now, right? Because they're not in coaching yet. So sharing what you've earned, but specifically how it's helping you, how is it impacting your life? Even if it goes into savings, even if it's like, oh, well, everything's going into savings right now, paint the picture. What is that savings for? Um, so that's how you can post about coaching. I always try and like get to the nitty gritty so that you can talk about the feeling behind it. That is what people can resonate with. Then invite people to learn more about what you do. That can also be in that post, or maybe that coaching post is just like a, a hashtag grateful type post, you know, um, or it can be a call to action. Like we've got the sneak peek going on, or I'm starting in a newbie internship. Um, so you can do that in the post, but again, I reach out to people all the time. So I invite people one-on-one -on -one 
now via voice message. That's working like a charm even for, for all the things. Um, so I invite people to learn more about coaching through voice messages. And you guys know now, host your own sneak peeks. The other thing I wanted to share is the picture you see over here to the right. Every time a coach signs up, I do a welcome picture for them for my Instagram stories. I do this for them because I tag them and they get to share it in their stories. But I also do it for me because when you post that someone joins you, people are like, oh, wow she must be working the business. She must be doing well. People are joining her. So it looks good for you. Anytime you share one of your clients successes or a new coach that joined your team or anything like that. So how do I train them? Full disclosure, before I get into this, Beachbody has redone their training and I really like how simple it is. Um, so I do reference that and it's just so easy. It's like, oh, you sign up as a coach. Great. Go to the coach training. It's just so simple, but I do still have this in my team page and people still, stu stu still use it. So I wanted to cover it. You have the same units in your team page. Um, yeah. So it's just nice. And it's also great to reference back to. Um, so first and foremost, I sent them an email and that's just like, Hey, welcome to our team. Um, here's the link to our challenge group that's going on. Here's a link to our team page. We have team calls. I do ask them to do their own coach intro in our team page. I used to be the one to do it. Like the, the picture you just saw back here, basically I would use that in my team page, but now I say, I would love for you to post a picture and just share why you signed up and why you're excited. Because if they're a working coach and they do that, to me, it's to me, it, it shows me like they're really doing this. They're in, they're excited. Um, and if they don't, pretty much right away, it's like, okay, how invested is this person really if they can't even post, even if it's with no picture, if they can't post anything. So it's just kind of like an indicator. Um, and I do add, like, if you're way too nervous, let me know and I can do it. But again, if they don't let me know and they don't do it, how much time should you be putting into that person? So I do have them do their own intro. Um, and then the training, I'm not sure how big this is for you guys, but unit one that you can't see yet, it's above that is a video from Moira Kusaba about vision. I think she's so amazing at talking about vision. So I have them watch that. As you can see, unit two is just get everything set up. Unit three is the magic. This is how to become an Emerald coach right away. Um, because that is one thing that I think if we can get them to Emerald, which technically is only two people. So that's an easier goal than success club to me because success club is three. So Emerald is on the way to success club. Um, if you're not convinced to sign up your spouse, family, friend, watch this. This used to be David Atkins video. So good. People would watch that and literally sign up their significant other, like at the same exact time, but he had to take it off of YouTube. So I do have a different one there now, um, how to start inviting. And I want to share too, all these things that you see are taken from corporate, uh, from the beach body champions video uh, or champions units, like whatever they use. I just watch them all first myself to see, okay, what are, what do I want them to really watch and learn? And I put them here. So I didn't spend the time creating all of these, which I think is really good because while I am one where I do want people to see me as a leader, that takes time <laughs> to do all of that. And you're teaching your team what they have to do. So if I did all these videos, I feel like my downline would feel like they would have to do all their own videos for their coaches. So the fact that I'm sharing from other people makes them feel like it's okay to do that. And then last but not least, I do check-ins. So I say, once you get through unit three, send me a text and we'll have a call. And if they've completed it, we set up a call. If they haven't, I just give them more time and I say, okay, well, what about by Monday? Do you think you could finish it? Then we set up a call and sometimes they just don't finish it or they ghost me. Right. And so I still offer a call for those people. They rarely even accept it, which is totally fine with me. I'm all about we need to raise their energy. I think a lot of people say you need to meet your coaches where they're at. And I believe that, but I also think it's our job to meet them a little bit more. Like it's our job, I think, to 
I don't know, pump them up and get them excited. And they're still so nervous in the beginning. So I do spend a little bit more time with those newer coaches, but like I keep saying, if they're not showing up, if they're not on the calls, if they're not doing the post, take those as indicators of how much time, like I would much rather see you guys inviting a new coach rather than waiting for five minutes for her to respond to you. So on that call, they usually have already told me why they're coaching, but I always like asking again, because the more we can get them to share their why, the more they believe it and the more they want to find a solution for that. So that's an important question. And then I just say, I know that I throw so much at you. I throw new coach trainings, challenge groups, video, like all the things. What questions do you have? And sometimes they have tons of questions and it ends up being a very long call. Other times they're like, no, I'm good. No questions yet. You know, they'll pop up. Um, so it really varies. Um, but then I have a couple of questions for them. I say, do you know what, um, what Emerald is? Does that make sense? And if not, we go over it quickly. Do you know what success club is? And then we go over that quickly. And I do mention success starters just because I think that's exciting. And then my favorite question is, if one thing were to prevent you from going all in with your business, what would it be? 90% of the time people say time. So when they say time, I say, totally get it. And I kind of just relate with my story, especially when I first started. And then I ask them to open up their Google calendar and pencil in all of the things that they have to do work, feeding your kids, going to play on your tennis league <laughs> and all that. And then where is your free time and pencil in coaching? I used to be the one with, that would take it a step further and be like, Oh, okay. So I can see you have time here between five and six. Is that where you want to coach? I would almost like pick the times for them. And I find that it's, so much more effective to have them do the work, like them choose because they're not going to give up on what they said that they would do for to you, you know? So I have them choose the time and say, just do it one week at a time. If it works great, do it again. If not, we can reconvene next week. We'll try different times. Um, and that usually helps a ton because they're like, okay, I can do this. Like, it doesn't feel like it's as time consuming. The other 10% of the time, people are just nervous. Honestly, people lack the confidence. And so for those people, I really just try and hype them up and get them to do something small, like a coming out post. And my coming out posts now aren't like, hey, everybody, I'm a beach body coach. It's really just any post that is fitness or nutrition or mindset uh, or a non-scale victory. That's a great way, actually, that I turn discount coaches into working coaches and build emeralds is by getting a discount coach to do their own non-scale victory post. From there, the next day, I'm like, oh my God, you had so many likes on that. And I will make a big deal out of it, no matter if they have five likes or 55 likes. Like so many people loved your flexing bicep picture, whatever. Um, do you think they might want to join our next pod group? short and sweet. And they're usually like, Oh, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I have a really simple script if you want to send it to them. And it's just like, Hey, thanks so much for liking my non-scale victory post. I was so nervous to post it. Um, are you also working on any fitness or nutrition goals? Or if they want to be more direct, want to jump in my next group that I'm doing. Um, or sometimes people don't want to send that. And I don't have them end with anything other than just wanted to say, thanks, just to start the conversation. You see here, the make a list of 50 people. I don't do that as much anymore, but I do like to get them to start making a list in their head or even on the call. Like when we talk about Emerald, I'm like, so just curious, do you have two people in mind? Like who would your two people be? <laughs> you know, and I try and get them to think, start thinking about that. Okay, so after the call, they send me some sort of action, right? It's either a list or it's their coming out post, or it's sometimes based on what they say in the call. Like if confidence is their, their thing, I'll come up with a random challenge on the call. And then they send me proof that they did it. And then I really challenge them to send me any conversation that they have with anyone who responds, especially if it's to like a are you also working on any fitness or nutrition goals? Because they don't know how to transition that to an invite, at least not without word vomiting and scaring somebody off. So I have to really be like, 
you're not annoying me. Please, please, please send these to me because when they do, I can usually help them sign somebody up. Um, and, but I find that they feel like they're annoying me. So I just have to remind them of that. Um, then I, while I'm chatting with them one-on-one, -on -one, I also like to do like little chat message threads. And right now I just have one in the past. So one with my personally sponsored coaches in the past, I've had one that's for Emerald one. I've even done one where you're at, where you want to push for success club, a different one when you're at success club two or four, a different one where you're at success club five. So you can get creative with what you, um, really what you want to recognize that you want to be repeated and have a challenge based off of that. But in those message threads, I will do like invite blitzes or connection blitzes are my favorite. Um, and one thing that I've learned within the past year is again, instead of just coming in and saying, happy Thursday, let's do an invite blitz. Anyone who invites 10 people post a GIF and you'll be entered to win a $10 Starbucks gift card. That was great. And I still mostly do that, but I get way more participation. If before I say that, I say, Hey guys, I'm feeling feisty. Who wants to do a challenge with me today? I get them to opt in first. And then I'm like, okay, here it is. That has been a game changer in these little chat pods, but also in one-on-one -on -one because I just, I just, I feel like it's a fault. You know, like when someone goes to you with a problem, we're supposed to sit back and listen I don't, I'm like, okay, here are three different solutions. Here's what you have to do. I'm working on it. Um, so same thing with coaching, like with individual conversations. I'm like, okay, I know you haven't sent invites. Let's go send invites. But I say, are you, how many invites are you comfortable sending, right? So I'm, I'm getting them to opt into these things before just being like, go do it. Um, and I incorporate small prizes, mostly stuff that I already have, like bevy packets, you know, or um, water bottles or decals, things like that. Recognition is huge. I think it's because I'm motivated by recognition, but I focus on lots of different areas. Firstly, um, one person at a time. So, and I do that in the one-on-one -on -one conversations, like, yes, we're going for Emerald, but let's just get your first one. Then they sign up their first coach. I'm like, okay, let's well, one more than your Emerald. Then once they get to Emerald, I'm like, okay, let's just do that again. Two more people. Emerald times two. Once they're there, okay, two more people. So we paint the vision of diamond, but focus on only one or two people max at a time. And then that way too, if someone goes inactive, I'm like, totally fine. You know, just sign up one more this week or within the next goal period that you have so that they don't feel discouraged. Like, you know, but you, very rarely does somebody hit diamond with their, with their uh, first eight coaches, right? Four on each side. Someone always goes inactive and then they feel bad about it. And I'm like, it's fine. Just one more person. So setting the smaller goal with the bigger vision, I think is helpful. And I shout them out every step of the way. And you can see that example here, even as an Emerald, I put, would post this in my team page and be like, everyone shout out Amber. She's on her way to diamond. She just hit Emerald. And when she signs up another coach, I add another star and I post that in the group. Another one, I add that. Oh, and then this person signed up somebody. I add a little star here. So every step of the way, people are seeing her progress and she's seeing it quite honestly, because I love the strategy part and knowing who's where and who's active. Not everyone is like that. And not even, everyone even checks the sponsorship drill down to see these things. So it's a good indicator for her to be like, oh, that's where I'm at. And I already kind of mentioned this. Um, everyone, I feel like I've heard a lot like um, meet them where they're at. And I do think that we need to raise their energy as their coach, but truly trust what they're showing you. Trust what they are getting involved with and, and doing or not doing. So I think this might be the last slide. Um, and this really goes towards longevity is whatever happens, know that you're still going to show up tomorrow. Even if today you earned a $0 paycheck, I didn't even go into my income. Let me share that quickly. So prior to earning the six figures, it sounds all nice and flashy. I didn't earn anything for five weeks. And then I earned $4.99 week six because I sold a Shakeology sampler pack 
that next week I earned $150. Hold on, let me see if this is the last. One. Yeah, let me stop sharing. Um, so I earned $150 that next week. And for some reason, my goal was $150 a month. It just seemed like a lot for me at the time. And so when I earned that in a week, I was like, granted, it took seven weeks to get there, but I earned it in one week. And I was like, oh my God, maybe I can do it again. So I became really competitive with myself. But the next week was zero. The next week was like 60 and then 80 and then like 250 and then zero. So it's very cyclical. And, but I had that quote in the back of my mind, like whatever happens, happens, you know, and I'm still going to show up. Like it's, it was never my plan B. Like I I was still going to show up. And I think that the fact that I didn't put so much pressure on myself helped with that, right? When coaches are like, I need to coach. I want to coach full time. There's, I feel like some desperation that comes in with that. So just having fun with it while setting that the bigger goals and the vision, and just knowing that you're never going to give up because this is about consistency over time. So any questions? That's what I've got for you guys. So um, Whitney had a little emergency, which I don't want to put on record. So I'll talk about it after she gets off. But um, I don't have any questions, but I feel like the um, not treating it like a plan B really resonates with me. Like it's always been my plan B. B, it was never like meant to be a plan A, but I like that you were like, I didn't treat it like that. Like I treated it like I needed to go all in. Um, I'm trying to think like, so um, what, like for me, like we haven't had a lot of advancements lately, just on the team in general, when you talk about like typing people up, because I used to do a lot of that when we had a lot of that, but honestly, it's really slowed, especially this year. How do you, like, I do all the stuff you're saying where like, I share stuff in my stories when new coaches join. I love to screenshot when I get messages from people, like I'm down five pounds, I fit in my skinny jeans. I do a lot of that in my stories, but like, how do you feel like you can really recognize coaches beyond rank advancement? Like, do you have advice for that? Yeah, it's funny. Well, not funny that you mentioned that, but same things going on with my team. Last year, I feel like energy is contagious in a team page. And so if it's dead, it takes a lot, you know, to like get it up. But last year we had one girl hit diamond and then somebody else hit diamond. And basically for a solid six months, it was just like diamond, diamond, diamond. And once you hit diamond, we have a diamond message thread. And like everyone wanted to be a part of that message thread. There was this like excitement about being part of that group. And so last, that was last year for us. It was like every week, something was happening. Um, Not the case this year. And so I've had to get creative too of like, okay, well, what happens when they stop at Emerald, you know, or don't even get to Emerald or diamonds are falling too, you know? And so I like to, in the book, people, people follow you. They say, recognize the actions that you want repeated. So yes, rank advancing is an action that we want repeated, but I've been trying to focus on the actions. So I've been doing more of like the connection blitzes, which for me, that looks like, I would say everyone set your phone for 15 minutes and go through your lists of people and I'll give them examples and just connect, send a comment or send them a message to as many people as you can in 15 minutes, post a GIF uh, with how many people you you did, and then I'll pick a winner. So they get to kind of recognize themselves um, or I'll do one-on-one messages. And if someone says, okay, I just did 20, sorry, is my internet messing up for you guys? Okay. Um, If they tell me that they did their coming out post or sent 25 connection messages or two invites, I will then shout them out for doing those actions, Mm. either in the message thread or sometimes in the team page. So it's more like action based this year. That's good. Yeah. I've been struggling with message threads too. Like I start them off strong and then like no one responds to me. And then I get sick of talking to the wall and then I fade off, but maybe I should just continue to talk to the wall. So that's, that's on me though. 
I mean, I would try the getting them to opt in. I feel, and if they, then if they, if it's crickets, you don't have to waste your time coming up with a challenge, you know? Yeah. Um, and if it's completely dead, I do recommend starting it over and just saying, all right, starting fresh, who wants to be, cause I think some people need the mindset of like, okay, I'm in, you know, so you could always start it over do some opt-ins. Um, and yeah, like I said, I loved like last year when I was really put getting a lot of people to push for success club, it was fun to do smaller ones. It was more work to manage all of that, but I'll do, I had so many going this year. I'm ju- I just have that one because I think it's easier for one. And then if someone is really like, Whoa, she's like, actually doing the work or she's standing out for one reason or another, I make sure I message that person daily just to check in, see where she's at. Um, something else I'm doing this year is I've noticed that people feel discouraged when they're ghosted. Right. So I kind of ask them, Hey, how many people have ghosted you today? Right. Because it makes it seem like, Oh, this is normal to be ghosted. Mm. It's not like I shouldn't be afraid of that. So I ask questions like how many no's have you heard today instead of how many invites did you send? So that's been helpful. That's good. Terry and Nicole, do you guys have any questions? I guess my thing is um, I've been slow just in general, you know, with the business recently, but the one thing I've never got the hang of is getting a coach, getting another coach. And I mean, it's not a plan A or a plan B for me. I mean, this, you know, is really a side thing. I'm, you know, somewhere between a working coach and a discount coach. I'm not looking to make tons of money, but I enjoy it. And, you know, Hey, every little bit counts. No one's turning down money by any means, Yeah. but I would love to get a coach. I don't see any of my customers showing the enthusiasm to become coaches right now. So I don't really think that is my group of people to find it. And if I post about my workouts or about being a customer with some new program, I get interest. If I post a coaching post, you get crickets. Like people, I mean, my reaction is people are afraid I'm going to call them out and try to talk them into something. At least that's the way I look at it when I see it. What about the new preferred customer thing though? Cause you can get to Emerald with two preferred customers. So like, that's a great, I don't, I'm like, talking over Samantha, so sorry, but I should put that in the chat, but like, I would reach out to all your customers and say like, Hey, we just launched this program. You could save X amount. I have a graphic I can send you that shows like, even after you pay the $15, how much you're saving every month, if you just order Shakeology. And then if they love it, they can always upgrade to a coach Mm-hmm. And Definitely. you know, all they have to do is enter their social, right? So it's like it's like a, a two-step program <laughs> for the nervous people. I feel like we're talking about like alcoholics anonymous, right? But like <laughs> you don't have to go from like customer to coach now. You can like step them up. No, I like that idea. I, I really haven't, you know, used the preferred customer enough. I probably should. I used yeah, it for the first time that. today. <laughs> Because somebody asked um, how much, so I said the 160 and she was like, is it 160 up front or going forward? And usually my response is just up front. And then if you choose to get the supplements, um, then, then you can do that. It, but this time I said it's 160 up front and then only 115 going forward as long as you continue to get the supplements. And 115 is the Shakeology with the coach fee of $15. Um, Mm. so that way I didn't have to go through like, this is how much it is. And this is what it's going to be. Um, and she was like, okay, sign me up. So I do like that. I also want to point out when I do polls in my stories about anything, fitness and nutrition, even if it's a challenge group, or even like, do you like to work out in the morning or evening, anything like that? I'm with you, Terry. I feel like people are gonna be like, oh God, she's going to message me. So I still do it because it's a great way to start connections, but when it's like a coaching thing, same thing. It's like three votes. One is my other account. One is my sister's account. And one is like one of my coaches that votes on all of my polls. No (laughs) one. Right. But despite those three votes, there's still other people watching those stories. So that's when I voice message them and say, Hey, I know that you saw the story. Not sure if this is up your alley at all, but would you want to check out the sneak peek for the coaching opportunity that I'm doing? And I do find that the main reason that I like to talk about coaching in my stories is for my existing customers, 
they're your loyal fans, right? They are the ones that are going to be like, huh, maybe I should do that. Maybe I can do that. So the more open you are about maybe like how you went from being a customer to a working coach, or if you're like me, I did both at the same time, just like being more open with that, they're going to start to picture themselves in your shoes. So it's not necessarily for like someone to go from, I have no idea what Beachbody is to let's become a coach. To me, it's most impactful for the people already in your community. I like it. And reaching out to those people. No, I like your message, how you, you know, either it's always hard to figure out how to send the message and how you said that about, you know, I saw you were watching it. Not sure if this is up your alley is just very non-confrontational for lack of a better word. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so awkward too. Like I could even have a script in front of me and I say something different every time, but in voice messages, it's great because it's so like I was sending voice messages from story watchers inviting to a challenge group on Friday. And at the same exact time I was leaving a message, my cat was puke. No, my dog was puking and my son was waking up from a nap. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to wrap this up because this is what's happening. And it's just so real, you know? So people love that in, in the voice messages and it's more, I don't know. It's so scripty now. Like when you say, even saying, thanks for watching my stories, were you interested? It's like, that's not very personal. So I don't send those messages anymore. I, I was just going to agree with that. I feel like, you know, you've got to really connect with people. I also think too, like if someone doesn't purchase from you, um, it's good to connect with someone that you actually like, right. And like, you know, cause then you can develop a relationship and you never know. Like I have plenty of people that I become friendly with on Instagram that have never bought anything, but mm-hmm. they're still cool. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not all about you know, the sale. Um, and I just, I thought it was really important to like openly talk about money because I think it's such a hard topic for people. Um, and I didn't start for the income, but I had the same, I guess, reaction you did when you first started making money. Like I was like, holy crap, I can actually make money doing this. Right. Like I didn't start for that reason, but I did continue for that reason. And, um, So I think it's important to like point that out sometimes because at first I was like, there's no way, like, I'll just, this is a great discount. And then I was like, oh, look, there's money. I used to sign people up. Do you remember when we had like, like a $300 pack with all the DVDs It had like three different sets of DVDs in it. And the commission was like a hundred bucks. And I remember like within my first month, I had like a week where I had like a ton of people sign up with that. And I had like a $700 week like within my first month. And I was like, holy moly, like this is nuts. So sometimes it's like those wins that you're like, wow, this is amazing. So I appreciate you sharing that. Nicole, do you have anything? You're on mute. No, um, I have a page full of notes and the TV is up really loud. Um, It's my husband's watching TV. Um, I think for me, like I do want to make money at it and, but I get in my own head and I have had like the warm market we talked about in the very beginning. I've had some very strange conversations with people that I've known my whole life that I never thought were even paying attention to my workout posts or anything. So mm-hmm. my warm market has kind of approached me, nice. which doesn't really make me uncomfortable, but it makes me like. I'm getting a lot of interest from them. So I feel like I need to be more active in asking them, maybe reaching out to them when I see them liking. And I'm not good at that. Like when they like my stories or like a post, I don't message them. So I need to do that. Yeah, I usually am. Oh my gosh, it's the 25th. I'm usually at my success club goal by now, like success club 20 or higher. This month I'm at four right now or six. Cause I signed somebody up today because I have not been inviting. So like, I literally started sending invites for this month, last Friday. Um, I did the story invites and then I did a call to action post and, or I don't know. Yeah. It was a call to action. So I was sending voice message invites to those likers. And I have now a list of people who said that they wanted info. I know they won't all sign up, but if you need, if you want people to sign up and you want, you know, 50 bucks in a week or something, then yeah, sending those messages and just getting people interested is 
for me, like what I have to do, you know, and the fact that people come to you too, that's even better. Write down those names because they still probably won't sign up right away, but they will. So, right, right. And I really didn't even think about them or consider them. I would have never invited them on my own. So I think it just caught me off guard. And then I haven't really thought about it until you Mm -hmm. talked about it. So yeah, circle back. I need to pay attention. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anything else? Well, Samantha, thanks for joining us. Um, I will stop the recording.